Welcome, everyone. I'm only going to uh, say a few words, and then I'm going to turn it over to the Master of Ceremonies. But I, what I wanted to do was just to mention a few words about uh, Dick Bizon. And it was a very, very short speech. I didn't even write anything. But clearly, we're, mi we're missing him today. And Dot's here. Don't cry, because you get me going. Uh, he was uh, more than 60 years with us, uh, with, with us as well as the Korean War veterans. And uh, if you want to see a great picture, go down by Veterans Park. He's hanging up proudly by the, by the uh, Veterans Park. So, Dot, thank you for coming. Remember Dick in your prayers. And Tom, you ready? Yeah. Father Vincent, could you come up and join us, please? Father, thank you. Please, sir, how are you? Let us pray. Gracious Father, you heard us when we cried in our distress. You graciously kept us safe and free. Without you, we can do nothing. We thank you for being good to us as a nation. Thank you for the service of recognition for those in service who deserve our thanks. Now we call upon you again, Heavenly Father, to let your favor be upon our men and women in uniform who have volunteered to stand against harm. Show favor to them. Show your favor on those who suffer physical and mental wounds in the defense of our freedom. Show your favor on our vets as they age. May they be an example of integrity and patriotism. Let them be the peacemakers. Fill them with wisdom and reason. God, we ask you to bless us and keep us Make your face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May you lift up your countenance upon us and give us peace. God, in your grace, bless our veterans and bless the United States of America. Amen. And now I would like to ask... Vice Commander Robert Metzdorf to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, if you all would join us in singing the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous light for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare, the bombs were stinging in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, everyone. Now, uh, Annie, if, Annie, if you would come join us here, Annie Whitney, please. Uh, we have a, a reading that we're going to uh, going to present uh, the officers of the post with Annie as well. All right, I'd like to introduce uh, Bob Kelly, who's our executive vice president, and everything else that no one else wants to do. Uh, Bob? How's that? Good. Overcoming the motion, thank you. <laughs> Today's Veterans Day. 
Veterans Day, we, when we think of veterans, we, say, we think of veterans saying we don't know them all, but we owe them all. It is a day to celebrate all that veterans have done for us. We honor our veterans, both men and women, who gave their best when called upon by their country. We thank them for their unselfish service to help preserve a country's heritage for all of us. We thank them for the sacrifices they have made for their many contributions to America's victories. We respect them. We thank them. We honor them. We are proud of them. And now, let us pray that the Lord will bless them with peace and happiness forever. Uncover, please. O oh God, great and almighty creator, we thank and praise you for the freedom we enjoy in our country and pray that our liberties will continue to be protected. Thank you for America's heroes that have fought for our freedoms and who have faithfully served our country. We honor all of our veterans for their sacrifice, for their courage, and for their integrity. As we celebrate these freedoms, we ask your blessing on those veterans who have made the ultimate sacrifice while defending our country. Bless their families and comfort them with the thankful prayers of a grateful nation. We thank you for our veterans, past and present. Through the efforts of all of these individuals, help us continue to promote justice in all nations. Amen. Uh, on Veterans Day, we commemorate the service of veterans of all wars. We remember how men and women set aside the civilian pursuit to serve the nation. The cause defending the freedom of mankind and preserving our precious American heritage. We recognize service to our country, to her cause that does not end with the termination of our military service. We continue to endeavor in behalf of peace with the feeling of profound gratitude to God and to the men and women who gave their lives as part of the course of this noble cause. Out of blood and sweat, we learned of purpose, sacrifice, tolerance, bravery, and discipline. These are the solid foundation stones of a great nation that we built. In our continuing quest for an honorable peace, we must cultivate these virtues. And The waging of war involves more than just the combatants who fight to the death on the field of battle. The fighting forces begin at the fireside and in the hometowns. The repercussions of war's terrible brutality have chilled the heart and dimmed the hopes and dreams of many a loved one left behind on the home front. While the horrors of the battlefield may not have been our experience, we have lived with the terrifying loneliness created to answer an aggressor's challenge. In waging war, we have moved forward with a unity of purpose, which made us strong, forgetting pettiness, egotism, and pride. Our hearts beat in tune with those in other nations fighting for freedom and the dignity and opportunity of mankind. In our constant quest for an honorable world peace, there is need for unity of purpose if we truly are to move toward a brighter tomorrow. Thank you, Annie. She's the uh, president of the auxiliary. If there be glory in war, it is the almost incredible spirit which it engenders. Heroism becomes contagious. Yet in warfare, greed and brutality are epidemic which persists in the peace that follows. Let us strive to see the same spirit of self-sacrifice is cultivated in peace as it has been exhibited in war. It behooves us to rear new standards of success, to inspire youth in peace as youth was inspired in war. Public honor must be given where public honor is due, not to the manipulator of a market, the seeker after profit, power, or position, 
but rather let us honor the heroes of science who alleviate human suffering and carry to greater heights the standards of civilization. Let us honor those who in public service seek not how much they may secure from the nation, but how much they can give. Let us honor those who devote their lives to that education, which will lead our children on to live and laugh and learn and love, as have we have only dreamed of doing. Let us honor those veterans who carry into ordinary affairs of life a noble idealism and sincere capacity for self-devotion. Let us translate the devotion of war into a devotion of peace. Let us move the will to live as well as to die for our country. Courage is one of the virtues born of war. The courage of individuals in the face of danger and the courage of nations to protect the weak and punish the aggressor. There's bravery to be shown in peace as well. May we recapture the courage which turned the wilderness into cities that bound men together under government. We can turn slums into comfortable homes, turn uncertainty into certainty. We can reach new heights of civilization and opportunity for the men and women of this nation if we have the courage to expect and work for a better way of life. There can be romance in this challenge also. The bravery that fights for political, social, economic, and spiritual gains may be more difficult to practice, may be unsung when achieved, but is all the more worth striving for. Thank you. War has taught us the lesson of obedience to command. The game is more than one player. The ship is more than the crew. There is a great discipline we must now pursue if we are to preserve the virtue of obedience in our quest for an honorable world peace. That is, obedience to the laws. We ourselves make the voluntary discipline of citizenship. Under our system of government, we may change the laws by majority rule. We may persuade our neighbors to new theories or new courses. We may advocate in free elections the choice of veterans or plans. As good citizens, we follow the choice of the majority, whether that choice be the individual's or not. This is the virtue of discipline, which must be ours in peace. This is the lesson we must learn at home, in school, or on the playing fields, in organizations, or in the community, and our nation. It is a lesson of voluntary obedience to the decisions of the majority. We must not be unmindful either of the conclusions of other peoples with whom we have joined in this quest for an honorable world peace. This is the higher order of disciplines. In time of peace, we can use the virtues of war and put behind us the ugliness and the suffering. In peace, we will go forward together to scale new heights of achievement and unity of purpose in sacrifice of the good, common good, in tolerance for those of different faiths and creeds, in bravery to fight for society and economic gain, and in the discipline of good citizenship, we shall move forward in the sight of God, in a strong nation, in a peaceful world. Thank you. Now, I would like to have to introduce Mayor Keith Mashagna, who will give us a speech. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Beautiful day, right? Today's a, del uh, a day of celebration. You know, unlike Memorial Day, this is a day where we rejoice in having the veterans who have protected us our entire lives. So I would like to thank uh, the Jed C. Barker Memorial Post 153 for inviting me to speak today. And uh, it has been said, I actually had some notes written down here of something new to comment on. And as I'm standing in the back, I look up and actually the beginning of my, uh, my comments are hanging on the wall. So I'd like to, um, to recite them. 
Um, and it says just inside this, this door right here, it says, it is the veteran, not the poet, that gives us freedom of speech. It is the veteran, not the campus organizer, who, <clears throat> who has given us freedom to assemble. It is the veteran, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. And it is the veteran, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. And that's what we should be thinking about today. Those, all of those blessings that we have in this wonderful country have all been gotten by our veterans. So think about that today. It's important for us to remember those words, not just today, but every day. All that we have as Americans was fought for over many years and many battles. From our independence to our individual rights, much was won on the battlefield. And all of our men and women in the armed forces are prepared to put themselves in harm's way at a moment's notice to keep us safe. We cannot repay those veterans that gave their lives for our way of life as we cannot repay all veterans for their sacrifice while serving. There are more than 18 million veterans who put their personal lives on hold to put on a uniform and to serve our country. 400,000 in New Jersey alone. Author Claudia Pemberton once said, America without her soldiers would be like God without his angels. So here we are today on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month to thank America's angels, our service men and women. Never forget, God bless each and every one of you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, we would like to pre present memorial wreaths from each of the organizations. At this point, if uh, Commander Opelt and Vice Commander Metzdorf will present the wreath for the Legion. And now, Larry McKenna, commander of the post-SAL squadron, will present the wreath for the SAL squadron. At this time, Mayor Mishagna and Post Vice Commander Robert Metzdorf will read the names of those valorous people who were from Park Ridge and who had passed away during each of the conflicts 
from the First World War, the Second World War, the Korean conflict, and Vietnam. Edward B. Abrams. Martin Castellani. Lester McGinnis. Frederick H. Fisner. Charles Stalter. John K. Chadwick, Sr. Carl G. Clayton. Charles H. Emrick. Edwin C. Engelhart. Frederick B. Holmes. Eugene I. Laurier. Robert R. Lentz. Richard E. Metris. Robert A. Sayers. Harry R. Whitney. William A. Smithers. Frederick H. Dankey. William J. Murphy III. Jed C. Barker. Charles F. Bingham. Kevin R. Humphrey. Thomas R. Kyle Jr. Thomas Mallon. Glenn E. Truex. Thank you, gentlemen. I just want to mention that uh, Dr. Zone rang the bell between each of our written names being read. At this point, I want to make sure you understand it's going to get loud here in a few seconds. Uh, so please, please be prepared as our honor guard will present a gun salute, which will be followed by Eddie Eggers and Derek e Iger uh, performing taps. Honor guard. Let us pray. As we depart, Heavenly Father, watch over the veterans of the United States in recognition of their loyal service to our nation. Bless them with wholeness and love. Shelter them. Heal their wounds. Comfort their hearts. Grant them peace. God of justice and truth, bless our veterans, these men and women of courage and valor, with a deep and abiding understanding of, their prof of our profound gratitude. Protect them and their families from loneliness and want. Grant them lives of joy and bounty. May their dedication and honor be remembered as a blessing from generation to generation. Blessed are you, protector and redeemer, our shield and our stronghold. Amen. I want to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, we will be having refreshments served in the dugout, and uh, that will conclude.
Timmy Barrett, son of member James Barrett, will play a patriotic song. One more note, if I could ask uh, the principal of Westridge, Chris Kirkby, to come up. He would like to make a presentation of some cards from the students at Westridge School. On behalf of Westridge School, I just want to thank uh, everyone at the Post 153 for inviting us to the ceremony. Unfortunately, with the ceremony on a weekend, we can't bring the students out, but we look forward to coming back uh, in full force when the students are back in school in the coming years. Um, but so important for the kids at a young age to learn the importance and the significance and the sacrifice that these veterans have made. So uh, again, thank you to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bazone, Mrs. Levinson, and everyone with the, uh, the Park Ridge uh, Commerce as well as the Legion Post that's uh, made Westridge feel really much a part of this. So thank you and happy Veterans Day. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kirkby. Uh, as I said, that, that will conclude our ceremony. Please join us for refreshments downstairs. Thank you all. Thank all the veterans and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.